Hello, welcome to another exciting lesson. We have something really cool ahead of us, uh, something that so many people forget to do or simply don't do at all, but makes a huge impact. You can make your images really pop and look a lot better with a small additional effort, for real. And what's that? It's the greenery. Uh, we should tweak and improve our plant shaders and do it fast and good enough. This lesson is a little bit different than other tutorials on the subject and you'll see why in just a moment. We are focusing on how to improve and tweak greenery shaders instead of making them from scratch, even though we totally encourage you to do the latter. The point is we want to have a basic understanding of how greenery shaders work and how to quickly fix them after automatic conversion from let's say V-Ray models. You don't need to do everything perfectly from scratch, but you need to know how to do things good enough and make them work in real life projects in a commercial workflow. We will totally get into that today. We will show some ways to work with Slate Material Editor. Lots of cool stuff. A little disclaimer here. This lesson is not so beginner friendly, so we really encourage you to go to the Corona Render YouTube channel and watch all the lessons on Corona Legacy material and physical shaders. You can take a couple of hours and binge watch all of them from start to finish. There's so much wisdom there and it's almost a sin not to watch it. And don't worry, uh, you don't need to be a shader hero to continue watching, but as long as you understand what's diffuse, reflect, refract, uh, translucency, you should be covered. There will be some intermediate tricks here and there, but we'll do our best to convey them as painlessly as possible. So let's get at it. Last time we touched on the subject of memory colors, we discussed that plants are one of them. There's a selection of hues that simply work. You, me and countless other people will be very susceptible to them. We should really focus on how to perceive them, to create that mental benchmark of colors in our minds and eyes. If you haven't seen that lesson, we strongly encourage you to do so. Greenery plays an important role and has a significant impact when people view your image. Architects focus on them because it raises the value of their projects, while casual viewers subconsciously feel good just by being around them. As an artist, we should also focus on them and train our eyes to see if something looks natural or not and how to implement it in our work. Just look at this collage from our guest stars for a moment. Absolutely everyone spends time and really nails down those shaders and colors. Everything looks fresh and vivid. Greenery is a signature mark for so many artists and it can be yours as well. And if you think it's not worth the time, let us convince you otherwise. After this lesson, we hope you'll think, let's go for it this time. It's not so bad after all. Okay, let's open up the scene we did last time, just to see our final result. We have our final render and yeah, I like the way it looks. Pretty fresh and everything looks on point. Depth works, we can clearly understand our hero grabs attention in terms of colors. The sky seems to match the memory colors and the same goes for the greenery. And it might be a little challenging to notice what the hues look natural or not, especially if you just began to train your eye, but at that moment Simply ask yourself if the sky is not too green or too magenta. Isn't the greenery too yellow or too blue? That's a great starting point and the core idea behind our previous lesson. Moving on. Greenery is a tricky subject. Your eyes will be arguably the most important part of creating successful shaders, but still, you need to implement them somehow. And even if you know how they are supposed to look like, it's so difficult to guess what's wrong if you're staring at your final renderings. There could be many ways things could go wrong. Shaders have a strong impact on the final result, 
tone mapping, lighting, 3D geometry, composition, all of that. But there's a way you can check all the above and investigate what went wrong. Today, we'll look at what's happening behind the corona hood and break our images into smaller elements. We will understand how the final pixels are produced and don't worry, we're not getting too technical. Just a rough idea of how the engine works. So let's stop here for a moment, go to this tab and start adding render elements. I have added some of them before, so let's delete them first. Let me add a couple of them one more time. Let's have the direct emission and direct. I think we can slide albedo. Perhaps source color. And that should be enough. Maybe volumetrics as well. Okay, let's start our interactive rendering once again. Okay, we have our rendering going, and now we can extend the list and have a peek at the different render elements we just set up. There is a lot going on here. Every image you render has additional information about them. You can scroll with the middle mouse button to choose any of them quickly. And any of them looks a bit weird, unlike our final rendering, right? Don't worry. It will make sense in just a moment. Corona takes all those smaller pieces and puts them together. It really does. Let's jump to After Effects to show you how. We have rendered and saved all of those render elements we just investigated a second ago. There's translucency, reflect, refract, emission. We also have our final rendering here at the top. But you can achieve this final image by combining all those render elements together, like so. We have all of them on blending mode add and just stack them on top of each other, one after another. It looks more and more like our final rendering after each component. And finally, bam, we have our final rendering. We know it's not perfect at the moment, but the reason is very technical and we don't want to get into it right now. That's not the point. The point is, your final image is a combination of smaller components, so using that knowledge, you can investigate separate elements to look for errors, instead of looking at the final image. Just break down the problems into smaller pieces. Let's check another example to push this idea even further. We will see how those components react to different sun positions how different render elements look when the sun is in the front and from the back. We prepared a full 360 to show how those elements behave with the sun direction. We touched base on how suns affect greenery in fourth lesson, but you can see it in more detail right now. There is a translucency element and it basically shows how the light passes through the leaves making them brighter and giving that nice yellow tint. It has a different impact on the final shader each and every time. There's a direct pass as well, and it's the light that bounced exactly once before hitting the camera. You know, some rays coming from the sun hit different objects, and if they happen to bounce directly towards the camera, we can find them here, in this direct pass. Also, we have a reflect element, which is pretty self-explanatory. But notice how it contributes to the final image when the sun is ahead of us and behind us. So, while learning to improve shaders, we should understand what those passes are supposed to look like. And honestly, you can acquire this mental map fairly quickly. Later on, we'll show you what the translucency element should look like, and how it shouldn't. We'll go through many mistakes and see how they are tied up with the materials. By the way, just the very last test here. Promise it's more of a fun fact though. 
we cut off most of the leaves in our scene. And yeah, it looks quite grim now. But you can squeeze a small nugget of knowledge from this test too. You can have the same shader for two different models and it basically won't behave the same. If the geometry is thinner, it won't have the chance to produce deep shaders and you end up with translucency kind of overpowering the whole result. If you look at those plants, they are kind of flat and definitely too bright. But when we toggle between our thin and the normal geometry, we can immediately notice that the same material behaves differently. So the lesson here is to be careful when you copy a shader that works from one tree to a different tree. Some trees will have a really dense tree crown and we will prepare different custom shaders for them. They won't necessarily work if the same tree is younger, having just a couple of leaves here and there. Copy pasting might seem tempting, but you could end up with awkward results. Okay, let's move on. We hope it makes sense on some level. Now we will translate all of it into the language of shaders. You'll see what settings are connected to each renderer element, what affects the direct pass, what affects the translucency and so on. As we have mentioned before, it's better to have a basic understanding of how materials work in Corona Renderer, so that you know what the wood shaders look like, to know what the diffuse and translucency is. If all of that seems like a cosmic knowledge, please let's get back to this when you watch the tutorials on the Corona Renderer YouTube channel. Try things out and get that initial experience. By the way, the whole content there is a gold mine, so you don't want to miss out on any of that. We will make a quick breakdown of the most basic plant material. The lesson is how to adjust shaders, which we will do later, but a basic understanding of plant material will come in handy. Let's breeze through it. Let's start with the material creation process and bear in mind that it works for 3D geometry with no thickness, no shell modifiers or anything like that. And the first thing is to add a leafy shape which we could do with an opacity map. We give it some texture, so it's not a default color. Some grass materials could be just a simple gradients, but most leaf materials should have some texture. Yeah, and we have a somewhat of a leaf material. Moving on. Most of the greenery objects are so thin, they can be considered translucent. The more translucent leaves are, the more light passes through and the more colorful. The colors get. We can see how their appearance changes when we add more and more translucency fraction. We can immediately see that extreme values like 0 or 1 look artificial, but it gets more natural somewhere around 0 0.4, 0 0.6. We will make a calculated guess later on and refine those numbers. We also have a texture plug to translucency color, which is always brighter and slightly yellowish. Keep in mind that it will be added to the diffuse color. It will be forced when the light passes through from behind and the material turns more translucent. So diffuse color, translucency fraction and translucency color are connected. Okay, and as a last part, even though it's not so vital, we can add some bump because vegetation is never 100% smooth in reality. We can add some intricacy to it and it will be essential when dealing with close-ups. We can achieve that by simply using a bump, normal map or displacement map. And the last piece is to add the reflections as well. This step will bring the perception of the surface. We will feel the weight and textures with clever use of reflection. Also, adjusting the glossiness will get you from a very dry to a very wet appearance. The proper values depend on the plant itself, but getting close to one makes it more wet, while lowering it down makes it more matte or waxy. Tropical plants seem more waxy and dark, so perhaps you can lower the translucency and add more glossiness to make them look more realistic. Just a fun fact though. And it's worth mentioning that higher IOR values will give the appearance of metal. And usually, vegetation IOR value ranges between 1.2 or 2.0, 2 
but honestly, you can narrow it down to 1.3 and 1.5 to easily get acceptable results. Okay, that's a very basic setup that we use in almost every possible scenario that will make your shaders look good enough. You don't need front back maps, uh, you don't need elaborate tree shaders. This setup is actually more than enough. And you may ask, where is the magic here? Well, it's finding out a sweet spot between diffuse, translucency fraction, and translucency color. Reflection adds a little spice on top of it, but as long as it's not shining like chrome, you're good to go. As a rule of thumb, thicker objects will be less translucent. So, for example, you can expect Monstera leaf to be between 0.1 to 0.4, and thinner objects like grass will be more translucent, between 0.3 to 0.7. Every object will have different values to make it work, and with experience, you will guesstimate it better. Also, we need to find a pair of colors, or textures. The first of them will be our base color, and the second one will be forced when light passes through, when the material turns more translucent. Our result will be a combination of those two textures. Now, it's tricky to find those pairs right away, but we need to start somewhere. So to give you some general idea, we created four different combinations to showcase the most important features. Now, the first setup has good brightness levels and hue selections that work, more or less. In general, diffuse is darker and resembles our memory colors. Translucency color is brighter, more saturated and slightly yellow. Small deviations from these values are okay but the problem is, the deviation is very often just over the top. Having base color too bright is the first big mistake. This will result in explosive colors. If your diffuse is too bright, you won't be able to achieve deep shadows, because albedo is so bright, it will just bounce rays of light left and right. They will be artificially boosted, and everything will just go to bright. The translucency effect will be added to our base color, so we can't have them both too bright. And the next one is very important. It is arguably the most important aspect of good shaders. And you really need to nail down your selection of hues. That's the real key to having a good enough or even magnificent plant shaders. Hues are not forgiving whatsoever. Most often, the textures are just too blue and bright, so we should tone them down and most importantly, shift them toward yellow. The diffuse should resemble a slightly darker, but still, a hue of memory color. Whenever it's too blue or too orange, just be fast to fix it. If you nail down the hues, it's possible to go with the saturation a little bit higher, but watch out for it. It can turn neon fairly quickly and look artificial. Watch out for saturation. Your textures could look fresh in the material editor, but they can provide artificial results in the render. So, what are the perfect values? Unfortunately, there's no go-to answer, but that's not the point here. The point is that diffuse, translucency fraction, and translucency color settings will be your area to investigate any potential mistakes. If you apply minimal effort here, you should improve the quality of your shaders drastically. You will be able to quickly notice which plants need some tweaking and what needs to be fixed when looking at the rendering elements. Sometimes the translucency will be so bright that it will immediately catch your attention. Sometimes the diffuse will be too blue and you will spot it while looking at the direct pass. Sometimes there will be just too much or too little reflection, and you will see that component of the shader as well. It will come together as soon as we start fixing those shaders. For now, stick to the idea that the materials are connected with rendering elements, and you can use that to your advantage. So, circling back to the main topic here, good enough greens. How to make them fast and good enough? We can immediately jump to Slate Material Editor. Oh yes, 
Before we adjust and tweak our shaders, we need to set up our working space. Now, the slate material editor is a topic of itself. Uh, some people love it and some people hate it. We know the verdict is split on that one, but we'll try to make working with it a little bit easier. We encourage you to try it out if you haven't already. You know, it's not 2014 anymore. You know, so let's get up to speed here. We just set up our working space the same as we work with our commercial projects. We'll select the materials and maps that we use the most just to have quick access here. We can right click and choose new group. Let's call it favorite. Right click again and choose a different color just to give it some extra love. Now we can drag and drop everything we need and use it in future. Let's take the legacy material, light material, just scroll through the list and pick anything that you use often. Same for the maps. We can go through the general and what do we have here? Fall off is quite useful. Gradient. Perhaps gradient ramp. Noise is super useful. You'll understand why this fast access is super handy later on. Lastly, we can pick some of the Corona native maps. There's many useful ones here. So we can drag and drop pretty much most of them. Corona color correct. Multi-map. Normal. Corona sky. Try planner map. We can always add maps later, so don't worry about it too much right now. We are halfway through setting up our workspace now. We'll do a little trick for the last thing. Let's drag and drop a basic material into our canvas. Right click and select open preview window. An extra window should pop and we can dock it wherever we want. We can move it around here and that's it. Navigator stays here for now, even though I don't use it very often. Now in this newly created window, we can find an option called follow current selection. You'll see what it does in just a second. It's quite cool if you're not familiar with this trick. Okay, we have our workspace. Now let's get back to our shaders. Let's investigate what the shaders look like from our scene. We know they can produce cool results, so let's see what kind of magic they hide. Let's get into the right frame of mind and just keep the ideas flowing. Let's pick the Juniper shader first. By the way, click on the object and use the slate to choose the shader. Just go to Material and choose Get from Selected. Turns out the material is super simple. We have a single texture assigned to the diffuse channel. And another cool note here, just look how beautiful the preview window works. I can click on different nodes and it will update automatically. We can quickly see any adjustment in a higher preview, which is super handy, but anyway, our first shader is super basic. One texture goes to diffuse and we have another that goes to translucency with some color correction added in between. It's slightly more yellow and brighter. Let me remove the navigator for now to have both of those windows at the same time. This node makes the colors a bit brighter. We also have an opacity map and a bump map. Pretty basic stuff. Let's check another material and see what's inside. I'll pick one of those trees here, just behind our hero. And again, get from selected and bam. There are a couple of shaders here, but this one is what we are looking for. 
By the way, this one is straight from the Corona database, so we really encourage you to use them whenever you can. Everything is nice and tidy here. Again, super simple. We can see what kind of texture goes to diffuse and what kind of hue it has. Slightly on the green-blue side, but that's okay. What goes to translucency is slightly brighter, more yellow, and no color correction this time. Just a different pre-made texture. We can notice there's a custom texture plug to the reflection slot this time. Again, you can immediately spot how bright or dark it is with our preview window. It has an opacity lowered down to 50%, so it takes half of the texture value and half of the color here and multiplies them together. The brighter the color, the more glossy it is, Pretty normal stuff again. You don't need a complicated shader to make something look good enough. Let's check two more. We will look closer at the twigs material over here. We can pick material from object and click on the object this time. Pops right up. Again, we might sound like a broken record, but this one is very simple as well. We have a texture that has a really nice hue. We can even double click and see how it looks. Perhaps it's too bright. We also lower down the brightness and all of it goes to the diffuse slot. Translucency texture seemed too bright, so we lowered it down as well. It's so fast to go through those textures and use the preview window for that. We already have a basic understanding of what colors should look like so we can make really fast decisions while fixing the shaders. Obviously, that comes with practice, and we'll tell you in just a moment how to arrive at that point. We have a basic bump and displacement here. And some reflections again. If we open the material, we'll notice the translucency level is set to 0.2, and that number means that it takes 20% of translucency slot and 80% from the base diffuse. You can already think how that connects to the render elements we covered before, but don't worry, we'll get there either way. Now, translucency level comes with experience, but you can have a calculated guess before you start rendering. The thinner the plant, the bigger the number, so I would always start from a value around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 for grass shaders. Click here, click render and take it from there. If I approach a banana plant leaf, I would start with something lower, perhaps 0.2 or maybe 0.3, since they are thicker and don't pass that much light through them. Wild guesses like 1 or 0 are totally off charts, and most often we navigate between 0.3 to 0.7 tops. You'll quickly learn what works and how it connects to diffuse and translucency textures. But again, super simple shader, basic setup, even though we explain it in a more detailed way. One last thing, we covered the legacy material so far, but the same follows for the physical material as well. We'll show the setup when we explain typical mistakes later on. Now, we have different pieces of the puzzle, so let's combine render elements and shaders together we'll open a scene that has a couple of problems. It's a typical situation, so let's science this out. It starts rendering, and I bet you'll immediately spot something is off. Well, it doesn't look impressive, even with our naked eye, we can spot a number of issues. Everything is all over the place in terms of the greenery hues. This one is shining like mad, while this looks so artificial, very much on the blue side too. Those colors are kind of desaturated, everything is not working together properly. And that is the reality of working as a 3D artist. When you merge different assets from different sources, you can expect something like that might happen different brightness levels, reflections, hues, and all of that, and if you haven't changed the plant shaders before, this could be pretty scary to approach. 
it's difficult to assess what's wrong by just looking at your final image and seems too time consuming to go through all of them one by one. So again, there's a better way. We can use everything we learned so far to do it really quickly and let us show you how. Let's look at the indirect pass, but you can choose whatever you want. We can immediately spot the colors have nothing to do with the memory colors. They are shifted towards green blue and way too much. This material is too bright as well. An indirect pass is a perfect way to investigate what's inside in the diffuse slot. What's kind of interesting is that the trees here seem to have a reasonable color, but in our final rendering, they seem too white. So that might be a reflection issues. And yeah, here it is, another red flag. The rest of our greenery shaders have a good reflection value, pretty dark, so we can keep it in our mind to investigate what happened there. We can also investigate our translucency element and again, we don't know if the translucency level or the translucency color is too high, but we will definitely look that up. One thing also that comes up to my attention is that this shader has no translucency at all. It's just pure black. So it means the translucency level is set to zero. This one is a total mess, but we have some direction as how to fix it. Okay, so let me show you how you can fix all of those issues real fast. Let us open the slate material editor. And by the way, if you open your scene for the second time, you might need to turn the follow current selection again. Now, let's see how our workspace shines and how easy it is to fix plant shaders. Let me handle the reflection issue first. I think it's the easiest problem to fix. Let me confirm with the reflect element which objects were problematic and grab their shaders. We need to ungroup those trees, select one of them and choose get from selected. Nothing fancy here, so let's check deeper. And what can we see here? Reflection IOR is too high. Bam. I can right click on the arrows to reset the value and there we have it. We can look at the texture and they seem pretty fine. One of them darker and the other one brighter. The translucency level at 0.35 seems reasonable again. Perhaps one thing I can do here is to change the hue toward the yellow. I can use our favorite windows now and drag and drop a color correction map on this link here. I can shift the hue and I think we are good to go. When down, let's move on. I think there are no more issues with reflection, so let's check another element. Let's look at the indirect again. It was kind of funky if I remember correctly. Those leaves look terrible, but I believe we can solve it pretty easily again. I have my twigs objects here. Let's grab their materials again and see what's inside. Let's check the first one, and yeah, translucency level is at zero. We already know that. Let's crank that up to 0.25, that's my usual starting point but I think you could easily go around 0.4. We can also notice that the texture is too cold, goes too much toward green-blue, so let's shift it toward yellow again. I think this texture seems fine. Is there anything else? Reflex seems to be okay, and I think it's enough for now. Let's check the second twig shader. And again, we need to shift the color. This might be too bright, but okay for now. Translucency level is at zero, so we need to change that, and seems we are done. Let's move on. 
what happened with those juniper bushes over here? I can notice everything is super bright here. Now, which adjustment does mess things up? Oh, right here, there's the exposure. Let's right click and reset. Does it look any better now? I think so. I think it's just good enough. You can always drag and drop the correction map and shift the hue toward yellow if you really want to. I usually go minus 10 and call it a day. Most often the textures are pretty cold, so that's an easy fix for that. Okay, anything else? Perhaps another juniper over here? Let's grab selected and go through it very quickly. Perhaps this one could be slightly darker, but it's fine as it is. Okay, we went through the passes and really stormed through this. We pinpointed the problematic materials, made calculated guesses about the shaders, and here we are. Let's see if we do any good. Yeah, I think we're good. Our scene went back to normal. Pretty nice and easy, isn't it? The beauty of this approach is that you can be very precise and select the materials that really need some love. Also, we fix them very quickly, just looking at the right places, which render elements told us. And this is the same process we have in our commercial work. Just go through the materials, Check the diffuse, translucency level, etc. It's good enough for commercial work. You don't need complicated shaders. And let's give you a few more examples to see how it looks in a typical project. Let me stop the interactive rendering. Delete the materials and unhide the layers here. I have a plant that has a very typical problem. It's a tree that was automatically converted from V-Ray, so we can double check it regardless. We can spot something is off here. Our preview window tells us there's too much reflection and that's a typical issue. We can switch to non-metal and that's always the first thing. Let's check the textures. We can notice the diffuse and translucency color are the same, so I will need to adjust it. Translucency fraction has a texture applied. There's some strange stuff around here too. Let me remove it. By the way, translucency fraction can have textures applied, but controlling it with numerical values is more than enough in our case. IOR has some additional maps, uh, no, I don't want it. I want to have everything nice and simple. So, what next? Let's drag a color correct map and make an adjustment to the base texture. I can drag and drop the link here and it just pops right in. It goes to diffuse and translucency again, but after the color correction. By the way, this is physical material and it's pretty much the same as a legacy. We have our base color, the translucency level and the color. Glossiness works the same. And if you have roughness instead of glossiness, you can go down here and choose this option. So, let's get back to tweaking our material. I can start with the hue and change it a little bit. 
I can lower the exposure and that's enough for the diffuse adjustment. Now I can add a second color correct and think about translucency. Something brighter and more saturated will do. Maybe we can add some yellow tint on top of it. I think those leaves could be around 0.35, uh, not so thin, not so thick, so it should be okay. Reset IOR and we should be good. 1.52 is okay, but perhaps we can go a little bit lower to 1.33. That's all. Let's see how it looks in our rendering. Well, it looks good enough to me. The initial shader had some funky stuff with the IOR and metalness selected, so I would assume it would look nowhere near it. Let me stop the rendering and check the passes again. I can definitely see now that the diffuse is too orange and perhaps too bright. We could fix it fairly easily. Just shift the hue towards green-blue and lower the exposure. Translucency look good to me, really pops. And what happens with the reflect? Well, we could go with IOR a little bit higher, but that's up to taste. And we fixed it really quickly. With a little effort, you can make a big difference. So let's go through all the possible traps you can fall into one by one. I'll grab this material one more time and summarize everything again. First thing is we need to have diffuse level at 1, an absolute must have. We check what's connected to diffuse color and think how bright it is and what's the hue. Make it slightly dark, over time you'll train your eye to see the sweet spot. Moving on, check the translucency rollout. You can remove everything from the map slot here and guesstimate the values. Something between 0.3 0.7 should do the job for the most plant shaders. Add another color correction and adjust the translucency color as we did before. Bright, saturated and with yellow tint. Check the IOR too. We usually go for 1.33 or 1.52, but you can play around with it. Higher glossiness makes the appearance of wetness while lower give you this waxy feeling, so adjust it to taste here. We don't use reflection and no volumetric effect, so reset everything here. You can also double check if there's no weird stuff with the bump values. Values close to 1 work for the most part, so be sensitive if there's something like 99 or something like this, and simply reset with right click. Don't make things too complicated. Don't create elaborate shaders, at least at the beginning. The less is more. Okay, we hope all of this inspires you to try and tweak your materials here and there. It takes some experience to understand how it's all connected, but it gets natural fairly quickly. It's the first step to improve your shading techniques, and don't beat yourself if it's not hyper-realistic. It should be good enough. If you really wish, you can take it to a next level, but that takes more time and energy. Okay, one last thing. Something that comes up pretty often. We're great fans of Max Tree models, but the way they are set up can be quite annoying. Sometimes when you grab those materials, you're faced with something like this. And you know, to go through every possible material and adjust them one by one seems too much, even for us. We can see the textures are slightly on the bluish side, so still, we need to adjust them somehow. By the way, if you grab a complex material like this one, you can disable preview rendering over here to make it run a little bit faster. 
Now, let's do a little trick and disclaimer here. That's definitely more of an intermediate trick. I just want to simplify this multi-material and transform it into a single corona material. I'll start doing it and soon enough it will make more sense. Let me drag all the diffuse shaders over here, one by one, in the same place. Nice and tidy. I'll drag all the opacity maps over here. I could do the same with the normal maps and reflect, but there's really no point at this moment. Let me delete everything here and make everything from scratch. That's right. I'll take the physical material from our favorites group. I'll choose the multi-map as well. And it's getting a little funky, but bear with us. Let me enable the rendering once again to have the preview window update in real time. Now, we can see which materials are missing from our multi-sub material and plug our diffuse maps here. It starts from 4 and goes to 9, so let's put 9 here and you can hold shift and drag the multi-map to make a copy. Let's do the same with the opacity maps. Maybe I will fit in the missing slot just in case. I need to switch to face material ID in both multi-maps and I wonder if you already know where we are getting at. We can notice that some of those textures are too green-blue, so I can play with that a little bit. Just shift it towards yellow again. And that seems to be good enough. Let me plug it to our diffuse slot. We can drag and drop another color correction and plug it to our translucency color as well. I need to change the material to thin shell. And now I can change the translucency level to 0.4. Something like that. I can adjust the translucency color, make it brighter and more saturated. Seems fine for now. IOR seems okay too. Let me plug the multi-map to the opacity slot and I can finally put the material back to our multi-sub material. We will be able to drive everything with only one material. And the beauty of this setup is that we have different textures for different leaves as well. We keep their opacities. You could plug the reflection maps as well into the multi-map, even though we didn't do it this time.
Overall, this setup just consolidates all those materials into one. We did it from scratch and very fast, and it should be a reasonable starting point for further improvement. This setup now is as easy to adjust as we had earlier. I can do the same trick with color correction as we did before. Plug and unplug it. We can go lower with hues again. Or we could raise the exposure and add a yellow tint instead. The point is, you have a really nice setup to adjust everything and do it really fast. We can drive our materials to a really nice place without any huge effort. The setup is very easy and flexible. If you really want to add some production value to this setup, you can have custom reflection maps. It's one way to improve the shaders so they work better from a closer angle. Another thing is a custom displacement and normal map. If you think about really leveling up your shader game, you should focus on this area as well. However, this lesson is all about making good enough shaders and I really hope you have a solid direction for future improvement. So yeah, uh, we managed to pull through. We hope this lesson inspired you to try and tweak plant shaders if you haven't already. You can implement this workflow to your commercial project. It's really fast. Uh, check the render elements and fix the materials. It's pretty natural. Over time, you'll build this mental map of how the scores are supposed to look like. You will spot mistakes from miles away and your images will start, uh, start to look better. Fixing and creating plan shaders is a basic tool for a 3D artist, so we hope you'll use it next time.